GearBest.com sells this Creality CR10 large volume printer for under $500. But is it any good? Well, I put it together, ran some test prints. I'll show you all that and give you my honest review on today's Film of Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. This is the Creality CR10. It's got a big build area of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters tall. So you can print some pretty big things on this. But it's a kit. So let me show you how this goes together. And here's all the pieces taken out of the box. The electronics and power supply are already assembled into a metal box, a spool of filament, and then the frame and then some tools to put all together. The instructions a little bit vague, but let me show you how this went together. So the first thing I did was took out these brackets. One has a stop switch on it for the z-axis and the other one's just a t-bracket. It's got these t-nuts and bolts already on it. So as you turn the nut the t-bolt automatically slides into place. I left them just a little bit loose so I can move them around and here's the t-bracket. It's on the, the right side. The switch goes on the left. And I put this one in place not realizing there's a screw missing. And I tightened this up just enough so it's held in place but I could still slide it. And then I slid the gantry, the whole uh, upper section gantry and everything down onto the T-nuts. And then tightened those guys up. And this is when I realized I was missing a screw. I found it in the box. So I took the bracket off, put the T-nut on and then tightened it up to the uprights. And this, you know, this is really easy. So I figured at this point I need to slide this back and forth just so... Uh, I could line up the uh, nozzle to the edge of the bed and then tighten everything up. But then I found these four screws in the bag. And I didn't see in the instructions where to put these, but then figured out, oh, they go inside the bottom of the printer into the arms. And, and that lines everything up. And while I was digging in there, I found this screw, which turns out it was missing from the Z-axis nut. So I put that in place, tightened that up, and then I installed the spool holder which goes on top of the electronics box and that's just with some hand nuts and then there's these two connectors one's a four pin and one's an eight pin and they just push in and then screw in place so this is really really nice and then the rest of the electronic connections there's x y and z connections the x axis had a motor a switch and then the extruder was right there so those three connectors and then the z connector and then the the z stop switch was here I'd use some needle nose pliers to get in there my fingers were too fat so then I got the y-axis connected and then it switched and basically the electronics was hooked up so all I had left was the Bowden tube I slid into the extruder and then I was ready to turn this thing on so I plugged it in flipped the switch and nothing happened I'm like oh my god did I get a dud this is a fuse blown so I popped out the fuse and I looked at it it looked good to me so I got out my meter checked it and it was perfectly fine then I realized it was set to 220 volt instead of 110. So I flipped the switch, tried again, and bingo. It was up and running. Looked like it was running Marlin, so I knew the software. So the next step was to home everything. And I homed the X and Y perfectly, but the Z started grinding. I could just hear a grinding. And that's when I realized that nut was probably too tight because I couldn't even turn it by hand. So I, I loosened up those two bolts, those two screws, and... Uh, it moved freely and then I tried home and again and everything worked fine. It came down and lowered and hit the Z stop switch and I was ready to print. Before I could test it I noticed this bed was really loose. So I flipped it over and there's six wheels that hold this and this one wheel wasn't even touching. So you turn these eccentric bolts with the wrench they give you and it just they shift in one direction or the other and I got it to tighten up so all six wheels were spinning and then it was tight. So then I just manually adjusted. It's got nice thumb wheels underneath. And it was ready to print the first print. And this is their sample print. It's a small little cat. And I'll tell you what, this thing came out beautiful. Look at this. You can barely see any layer lines on it. And it almost looked like it was injected molded. It was incredible how good this came out. Such a small print on such a big printer. For a big printer to print something this small, this accurate, that says a lot. But could it print big really good? So I found this vase in their list of STL files that were on the SD card. And I upsized it 150% and I used a Simplify 3D profile that I got from Preston at Press Reset YouTube channel. This thing printed awesome at a 0.3 layer height. 
couldn't believe how good it looked. Then I went really small and I printed my chest pawn that I do in every review. And this thing at point one looks really good. A little bit of over extrusion in the middle, but overall, really good. As I make this video, GearBest.com has it on sale for $409.99. If you're interested in it, there's a link in the description of this video. It'll take you right to it. So what are my thoughts? Well, my first thought was this single lead screw is not going to work. This thing is too big and too heavy. It's going to sag. Man, was I proved wrong. This, this works excellent. Uh, the hot end, I don't know what this hot end is. It's really, really small. It's got a, a small nozzle. They said an MK10 nozzle in the documentation, but I don't know. It doesn't look like an MK10. I want to put a .8 nozzle on this thing so I can print big and not take, you know, three years to do it. So I'll have to find a nozzle that fits it. I'll let you know in a future video if I do that. Uh, but overall, I love this size. I was thinking about building my own 3D printer, and this is what I had in mind. 20, 20, 20, 30 aluminum extrusion, metal brackets. There's metal brackets for all the wheels, nothing plastic or 3D printed. Um, there's two 3D printed parts, just a guide for the rod here and then the pulley on the Y-axis. And there's a couple injected molded parts. The extruder mechanism is injected molded. This is kind of cheap. I don't know if this will last, but it works, you know. The only acrylic part I could find was this bracket right here that holds the switch for the X-axis. So overall, this is what I would have built. I just would have put the electronics in the base. I would have lifted this up and put them underneath. And I would extend this so the bed doesn't go beyond the front or the back. That way I could build a box over this and then print ABS in an enclosed chamber. And still the electronics would be outside that box so I could keep it cool. So the fact the electronics are outside, you could still put a box over this thing and print ABS and not worry about overheating the electronics. So that's, that's all good stuff. But the end of the day how good does it print and the quality that I'm seeing here this is better than many of the printers I have in my shop right now there's other reviews out there uh, Preston at press reset he did he's the first one I saw do a review on this so I'll put a link to his channel uh, Uncle Jesse he does a lot of cosplay stuff he did a review on it I'll put a link to him and uh, Dustin the Jetman he was loaned one of these to put it together and review he did that so i'll put i'll link all those guys in the description so you can go check them out you don't have to go by my opinion uh but go check out their videos and decide for yourself but uh the links in there in the description too where you can go right to GearBest and get that good price i don't know how long it'll last uh it's up to you but i'll tell you what i'm going to be doing more printing on this this I, I give this a total thumbs up Hey, you're still here. Thanks for sticking around. A lot of people leave by this point in the video. Check this out. I got the Fabricator Mini version 2 from Hobby King. I'm going to review this in the next film on Friday, so I'm going to go from big to small. So you get to see it because you stuck around. Anyway, that's it for this week. There's some videos popping up for other film on Fridays. Click on them and check them out. I got uh, Tinkercad tips and tricks videos out now. I got some electronics videos, so subscribe. If you're not subscribed, that way you don't miss anything. So that's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.